of webinars on Fortinet solutions. My name is David Edovic and I'm the pre-sales manager at Exclusion Networks. And alongside me is also my colleague Chris Pritchard, who is our dedicated Fortinet pre-sales engineer. And today we're going to be looking at APT protection with Forti Sandbox. Um, and I thought rather than go through a whole lot of PowerPoint, we'll, we'll set the scene and then Chris will go through and do a, a demo of, of the interface and, and the solution and the integration. Um, also, rather than go through the threat landscape, I, I'm assuming that the people on this call are very familiar with the threat landscape. So just as a high level, sandboxing one-on-one, -on -one, we'll, we'll look at why do we want to sandbox. Um, the reason why I put this in here is because with the rise of the next generation AV products, um, I, I've heard people speaking about the possibility that sandboxing will be become redundant and, and become dead. Um, I, I don't see that happening. Certainly, you don't want to be leaving leaving your detection to the point at which your your malware has reached the endpoint. And why why do we sandbox? Well, sandboxing. Um, enhances the ability of signal, 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 signal based AV products to be able to detect um, malware. As we know, signature based products um, only inspect post execution, um, and malware changes, and malware down, downloads more malware. So we need a way to be able to analyze the behavior of the malware, um, analyze what it's trying to do at that time, what it, its intention is following its, its initial download, potentially to download additional malware, um, and be able to remediate against that before it reaches the endpoint. So let's quickly, malware behavior. We know that malware often disguises itself to slip past security detection. One method of doing this is to link an attack with a a different attack to distract the security administrators so that your real attack and purpose can be disguised. An example of this is to create a DDoS attack. Um, and while the IT department is busy mitigating a DDoS attack to ensure that their solution and their servers do not go down, you are then able to slip through your low performing malware, which then in turn can, can download some high performing malware which then can download your payload to extract uh, sensitive information and, and, and for fell on, 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 the, on the dark net. So we aim to disguise the download, down, the download um, and then survive in the network. Um, we all know the stat that on average there's 200 odd days that malware is surviving and attackers are in your network before it's recognized. Um, in the UK, we know that that figure is near 400 days. Um, but with 40 Sandbox, we're able to first detect and then limit the survivability of any intruders. And the fourth advantage is that it's a blended approach towards malware protection and APT protection. So we have the AV engine running on the 40 gate alongside a real-time sandbox. Um, other vendors call this a pre-filter. So it's OS independent. It's not subject to VM evasion. Um, so you have a AV engine and pre-filter on the sandbox, uh, or on the 40 gate rather, or on the 40 clients, because 40 client can also integrate with 40 sandbox, um, even before you get to the virtual OS um, execution sandbox. And that blended approach is an advantage of Fortinet that, that gives you that combined intelligence um, that's able to give you better, uh, better throughput as well as better um, detection rates. The other advantage of a FortiGate gate sandbox solution um, rather than a solution for other vendors is that it can be deployed in various modes. So firstly, it can be deployed in standalone mode, where it is able to sniff the network. Um, it's able to sniff the network. 
So it, it links in to solutions where they may not have a Fortigate in place, they may not have other Fortinet products, but you are still able to provide sandboxing solution um, in, in, a, in a Greenfield site where there is no Fortinet at the moment. It will also be deployed in integrated mode, um, linking into 40 sandbox, 40 gates, 40 web, and 40 clients. And another benefit of, of it is that it can be deployed in a distributed mode. So whereas with some other products, you have an email solution with a sandbox in the email box, or you would have a web solution with a sandbox in that web solution. With 40 sandbox, you're able to have one sandbox provide sandboxing services to multiple devices in multiple locations. Here are some stats from independent research, and, and NSS Labs, I'm sure you agree, is one of the most reputable sources of testing. Um, and I think these are the last year stats in which um, the 40 sandbox came up with a 99% protection rate. Um, and this year, stats have just come out. And we've actually gone up to 100% protection rate. Um, and if you just Google for the 2016 NSS Lab 40 sandbox, okay. you can read the whole entire report. So again, to summarize, the, the, the return on investment um, is particularly clear in the fact that you do not need separate sandboxes or separate sandbox engines for the different attack sectors, but you are able to use one sandbox engine to link devices protecting various sectors. Um, therefore, you have a, a better return on investment and a better collaboration between your whole solution. Investment. So in summary, before I hand over to Chris, um, the sandbox is, is more robust, um, independent testing verifies this, 100% um, detection rate um, across various vectors, various types of attack. Uh, it has the best performance and it functions for all attack vectors of the well, mail, web, or FTP, all through one box. And also, it's in integrated into the whole Fortinet security fabric, um, as long as, as, as Forty Guard as well, providing uh, a, a a a circle of information that ensures that there's always um, actionable intelligence. So at this point, I'll hand over to Chris Pritchard, who will continue with the demo. Morning, everyone. Hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I was on mute then. Sorry. Uh, and this is the uh, the forty the forty net sandbox offering. Uh, this, this actual uh, is this actual sandbox is a, a physical appliance. However, you can purchase it as a, a virtual machine. Uh, the virtual machine will only run on VMware, uh, and you need to have VMware Sphere enabled as well. And there is also um, a forty cloud sandbox um, option. However, it is much more limited in the functionality, uh, what it can provide. Basically, um, if you want to use the, the 40 Cloud Sandbox, um, you can only uh, do sandboxing for a 40 gate or a 40 mail. You cannot do sandboxing with a 40 web or a 40 client. Um, there's also no uh, manual file uploading, so you can, do, uh, you can upload file to, to this unit, for example, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and you can scan sort of files and, and things on demand. So the sandbox is, is pretty straightforward um, to configure itself. Um, the way in which you um, amalgamate the, the sandbox with the 40 gate is, 
it's pretty similar in all fairness to um, adding a, a 40 analyzer to, to a 40 gate. So if we just jump on our demo unit here, uh, all we need to do is go to the cooperative security fabric. Uh, we then select our sandbox appliance and the IP address. If at this point we, could, we, we uh, tested the connectivity, it was failed, and so we've authorized it on the, on the sandbox unit. Um, once we've, we've added the IP, uh, we can flick back to the sandbox. We go to our scan input, we go to our device. And as you can see, you can see the device here, it's already been added. If we edit it, um, we can remove the authorization if we wanted to. So we've added a new unit, we've, author we've authorized it, we OK it, and go back to um, the, the 40 gate, we test connectivity to make sure that we can connect to the sandbox, we can see that it's online. Uh, the only other option that we need to configure now is our security profile. So we go to antivirus, We've got the default profile running here. All we need to do is select the sandbox option here. So basically any traffic that hits the policy with this AV profile configured, well, all the files will get, will get sent through to the sandbox to scan. So back to the sandbox unit itself. Um, this is probably the most useful page um, of the sandbox for, for quick reference to things that have been scanned and what types of files have been scanned and so on and so forth. So anything highlighted in blue here, um, we can actually select. So for example, if we go to some of the malicious um, files that we've, we've downloaded for testing, if we click here, it will open a page and it will show us the malicious files that we, we've downloaded from the iCar um, test site. And it's not just, oh yeah, we've downloaded it on this day and this is the file name. We can drill down into that file so we can see what it's doing. So if we look, uh, we can, it's marked as clean for the false positive because it knows it's a test virus. And then we can go to the 40 guard encyclopedia and we can look further into what that file actually is. Uh, we can also look at all our, our clean files that have come through um, to the sandbox. So for example, on demand basically means that we've uploaded a file um, via the, um, the scan input uh, on-demand file scanning. So we've uploaded a PDF just to do a one-off scan to make sure that the file's okay um, to distribute into our network. A good example of this is if that someone comes in with a USB stick, they've got a file on there. Before you put it on your shared drive, you can basically run it through the sandbox and it will tell you whether that file is, uh, it is malicious. So if you look at our on-demand files here, and we can see today um, I've downloaded, uh, I've uploaded a couple of, of PDF files, and these are just from the Fortinet website. And we can see the file size, we can see the um, hash algorithms, we can see who it's been submitted by, uh, we can see when it started, finish time, so on and so forth. We can see what behavior um, has happened when the, when the file has been allowed, uh, downloaded and opened up within one of the VMs that is running within the sandbox itself. Uh, the rest of the information on this, on this page is purely informational. Um, things that uh, are of note, if you, to you, if you were to buy a sandbox, you need to make sure that these options are selected and that they are green. Um, if they're not, it basically means that either the box is licensed or it's having trouble speaking to the 40 yard network. Um, 40 view, um, this is a similar but a much cut down version of uh, 40 view um, options that you get within the 40 analyzer or 40 gates. It's purely informational again. So we, if we have threats from specific hosts or files, we'll be able to see them in here. And if we want to view all the files that have been downloaded or, or been scanned by the sandbox, we can just do a search, we can select specific dates, and then we can see the files that have been, um, have been uh, scanned and detonated by, uh, by the sandbox. So for example, this is one that we've done today, oh, it's just updated, uh, let's have a look, let's just put any of these here actually. And then again, we can see all the details. We can see where the actual file has been downloaded from, what protocols, what ports and protocols have been used 
to download that file. And then if we view more, we can go deeper into that file again. Uh, we can see the overall outcome is that no, no suspicious behaviours have been detected, and we can see exactly what the file is, who it was submitted by, and so on and so forth. If a file comes into uh, the sandbox and the sandbox doesn't know what it is, then it will automatically class it as a suspicious file. So there's no worries about weird names and so on and so forth. Anything that it's not sure about, it always classes as suspicious. And the network configuration is very straightforward. Basically, you have an admin port, so you can get management access to, to manage the unit. And then you need to uh, configure a separate port. Best practice for this is um, to use a separate port on your, your 40 gate firewall. Um, this is purely for the access outbound for the, the VMware, the, the VM images that are actually uh, running on the sandbox. So that could be uh, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows XP, and so on and so forth. It basically provides a safeguard from traffic that, that might be doing callbacks to um, the command and control centers. It safeguards it from the rest of your network. And then you can also use the box in sniffer mode. So any of these, any of the ports, with the exception um, of port one and three, can be used as a sniffer. So you basically set up um, a span port on on your switch, and you can send all traffic to the sandbox. The sandbox will scan everything. It's quite a good option for when you first install the unit. Um, it just gives you, it, it will give you some data on information that's actually passing through the sandbox. Otherwise, if you've not got a busy network, it might be a while before you see anything of any relevance and, and of use to you. Um, system DNS, basically DNS settings so the box can, can hit the internet. And then the routing, uh, that's straightforward, it just routes out to the, to the internet. Um, system settings, these are very, very similar to what you would see on a 40 gate or a 40 analyzer. So we can, we can have um, separate administrators that can view different types of information within the sandbox. Um, we can configure all that servers and radius servers for authentication. So, for example, you might not want the administrator to be local on the unit. You can farm it off to a radius or LHAP box. Um, mail server. If we want to send information to a mail service, so system alerts and so on and so forth, we just configure our, our email server settings here. Uh, and anything that, that hits the sandbox, whether it be a virus or it's a, um, an update from um, uh, a malware package, it will email out to an administrator or specified account those details. SNMP, again, standard SNMP stuff, so if you want to do any sort of um, uh, SM, SMMP traffic uh, to solar winds and so on and so forth you can do. Um, 40 guard, uh, again, pretty much the same as you see on, on a 40 gate. These are uh, packages that have been downloaded from the 40 guard network. Uh, with, with up-to-date signatures and so on and so forth. Um, this is where we, we see the, the virtual machines. Um, out of the box, uh, there are a number of VMs that are um, have been downloaded, but they haven't actually been installed onto the unit, so this is the first thing you have to do. So, for example, it would say downloaded here, but not installed. You click install, the VM installs, the box will reboot, and then that VM is up and running. You can also clone um, up to eight VMs, and this is all dependent on the type of license you have. Um, a default license comes with um, four VM types. There are, I think, around 32, 33 different VMs that you can now download from the FortiGate, um, from the FortiNet website, and install onto the onto the sandbox itself. Um, scan policy and profile. Um, this is where we decide which types of files that we want to uh, what, that we want to scan. So when a file comes in to the unit, if it's a, a PDF, do we want to do we want to scan it? Yes, we probably do. So we can decide which which um, specific files that we, we want to scan. And underneath here, we can see our, our virtual machines that are running on the unit, and we can decide what types of files that we want to run in specific VMs. At the moment, we're not using uh, Windows XP because we don't have any Windows XP um, machines on site. We're purely using uh, Windows uh, 7, which no one's can. Uh, well, no, sorry, down the bottom here, 
So for testing, all we've selected at the moment is we want to, we want to scan for for PDF files. Dead simple to add uh, alternative files or additional files. So we can just click down here. Uh, and there, they're added to the to the uh, VM uh, option now. It might also be a good idea to add them to uh, the same files to um, the the 64-bit version. But as you can see, it's all point and click and, and pretty straightforward to use. And the the general options here, the most important one is probably this. This basically tells our virtual machines how to get out to the internet. And um, this is a specific um, interface that we have configured on our 48 units to allow them to get out outbound um, to the internet. And then we can select the options um, that we we feel that are appropriate for um, for our sandbox. So if it detonates a file, what are we going to allow it to do? Do we want to enable URL callback? Well, yes, we do because we want to see what the app is trying to get to, and then we can block it accordingly. Um, we can also add um, black and white lists. So, for example, we might not want to, to uh, scan, you know, particular URLs. So, if we say, right, okay, we want to stick in, uh, we want to, we want to create a a white list for Microsoft.com or Apple.com and so on and so forth. We can upload, we can select a specific file with that URL in and it will be whitelisted from any type of um, sandboxing. And again, we can have blacklist this. Blacklist is slightly different in so much as um, the sandbox will also create its own blacklist for URLs that it sees as malware. Um, but again, we, we can um, add our own uh, um, URLs um, to, to the list and decide whether or not we want to allow or deny them. Uh, and then there's the option to create Yara rules and this is a simplified option of detecting uh, malware sites. Um, there's plenty of uh, information uh, on the internet on how to configure these rules if you're not sure how to do them. Uh, personally I've not configured these any of these myself. I tend to go for the, the white and black list options. I think they're well, I find them easier myself, but the option is there if you'd like to use them. And the URL categories, this is this is similar again to um, 48 categories, so we can decide um, what categories we want um, to enable uh, sandboxing on. Um, it's it's good practice um, to to select which you want to scan against. You probably don't want to scan against everything, otherwise you can put um, a large overhead on the unit, so every site that people are going to is being scanned by the sandbox, and obviously that takes time. And then we can also archive jobs off, so if we're doing a lot of scanning, we can set up uh, a machine within the network to send our archive, archive files off to. Uh, we can keep them for a longer period of time, and um, if we want to recall those archives at any point in time, we can do. Um, the malware package, um, when, when uh, um, new viruses are detected or a suspicious file comes in that the sandbox isn't sure about and it decides that yes, it's going to class it as suspicious so it's going to be malware, then the, the sandbox will create um, a, new, uh, virus, uh, a new signature. That signature in turn will, will be automatically pushed out to your, your 40 gates and your 40 clients so they have the latest virus database on there. It basically cuts down the amount of work that Sandbox has to do because those clients now know that that, that latest package has got the latest virus signatures in. And with the URL package here, um, this, is, this is automatically downloaded to the Sandbox. However, again, we can decide what risk factors we want to, to, to scan for. So if we're on a really busy network, we might say, right, okay, medium risk. We're not too worried about that. Um, we'll, we'll say, right, join them on the URL package. We'll decide that we're only going to scan for the risk that are malicious or at high risk. Um, scan input methods. Um, these are the options that you don't get with um, the 40 cloud option. So we can do a file on demand. So if we select file on demand here, we submit the file. Um, uh, 
we browse the file here. And for example, we just go, I don't know, uh, Forty Analyzer PDF file, we submit the file. Submit the file. Come on. Okay, close that. And if we jump back now to our virtual machine, we should see that file being processed. Take it. There we go. So it, it's going to this one that we've probably just taken a few seconds to catch up. So at the moment, it's running this file through uh, a virtual or the, the virtual machines that we have configured for this unit. Uh, another option here is the URL on demand. So we can submit a file or URL. So we can create um, an ASCII file of, um, of, of URLs that we might think are malicious. And then we can upload them. We can upload the file to the sandbox. And it will go out to that URL and the off-site URL. And it will check against them to see if there's any malicious code within those, those, within those URLs. So again, very similar to the option that we've just done. We can go to the, we can change the depth of the uh, of the URL that it's going to go to, and so on and so forth. But the file has to be in ASCII format. It cannot be just in plain text. Um, the the sniffer option here, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, within the network configuration, if we if we want to use one of the ports of the sniffer, then we have to enable it within the, the sniffer config here. So as you can see, we're sniffing on port two. Um, so any traffic that's on hitting the spam port will go automatically to port two, and the traffic will be scanned by the by the sandbox. And um, the device, um, the device is is a list of of uh, 40 net devices that we've got speaking to the sandbox or we're passing files to the sandbox from. So sandbox can work with 40 gates, um, it can work with 40 mail, it can work with 40 web, and it can work with 40 clients. However, 40 web and 40 client are not compatible with the cloud offering. And the client option here, if we have 40 client configured to, to point at our sandbox right here, um, our 40 gates, and um, we were seeing any issues with a particular client, then we would see the information here, and it will tell us the serial number and so on and so forth. Um, the adapter option here, um, the the 40 sandbox uh, is compatible at the moment with uh, with carbon black. So if you've got a carbon black box, we can connect it to that. And then we can also do a network share. So, for example, on a, on a network share on, on your, your internal network, we can actually point the sandbox at the network share, and we can tell it to scan at certain points of time, so maybe once a week, once a day. And it will scan all the files within that network share, and it will tell you whether or not there are any um, malicious files associated with that networking share. Um, there's also um, the quarantine option here. So um, if we have, if we see any files that, that come into the network, um, we can say, right, okay, uh, we've got this file. We don't want to hold it on the ha on the sandbox. We want to farm it off uh, to free up space onto a, net a protected networking share within our network. Uh, the malware package. Um, if we were to to pick up a suspicious file. Um, this is the, the package that will be, will be pushed to our 40 gates and 40 clients. So what would happen is this malware package will be updated. It would get a, a higher revision number, and then it would be passed out to the 40, the 40 clients and 40 gates. And the same with the URL package. So if we see, if we see anything malicious, that URL package is then incremented by one. And this is passed on, on to um, our 40 clients and, and 40 gate. Um, the 40 gate and 40 client, if they are connected to the sandbox, will probe every two minutes for any updates related to the malware package and the URL package. 
Um, the last few options here um, are purely um, uh, for, for, for monitoring, stroke reporting, so it's informational at the end of the day. If we've got any um, uh, files that are malicious, then they will be picked up within within these options here. So as you can see, all our, all our files that have come through to the sandbox at the moment have, have been cleaned, which is good news. Again, we can we can um, we can cut this down and, and split it out into malicious and suspicious files, and we can obviously look at um, different time periods, so 24 hours, some days, or four weeks. Uh, we can also export this information um, to Forty Analyzer. So these are all our, our files that have come into uh, the sandbox over the past 24 hours. So this is probably people doing Windows updates and, and things like that. As we can see, uh, the websites that, that have been hit and the files have come from. Again, we can drill down through all of these um, to quite a low level. Um, as you can see here, we can see the submitted file name, the start time, and so on and so forth and there's no behaviors detected, which means the file is fine. Um, network alerts, so if we had a, an outbreak, a virus outbreak, then that would re be reported uh, within the network alerts here. And then we can do also um, view our uh, URL detection. So if we have a look, there's no records today. No record. So basically, we've not seen any unknown um, URLs uh, within uh, the, the scan of the sandbox for the time being. And then log and report. Um, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it's just uh, we've got the system events, we've got VM events, job events, cluster events, and notifications. And the log server is where we would configure a uh, faulty analyzer if we have one, which we do. So any of the logging traffic um, that we want to, to send to Port Analyzer, we can do. And then there's the report access. The, the, the sandbox will generate um, a report for you. Um, we'll just uh, generate one now. So we say, right, OK, uh, threat activity report for the last month. We OK it. It's, it's more of a high level management report, really. Um, it's, uh, it's not as in-depth as you will get from, from the actual 40 analyzer. So if we download here, that's so bear with me. There might not be any information in this, but we'll have a quick peek. Um, but it gives you an idea of the other type of information that, that you can actually pull and report. And you know, it just gives you a few pages, and it's very, very straightforward to understand. And if anybody w would require um, a copy of, of the report for, you know, for, the, for a pre-sales or um, sales material, then you know we can we can send you a copy of uh, one of our reports you can to give to your end user. And that's about it for the the forty sandbox. Has anybody got any questions that they'd like to ask? Okay, so there's um, no no questions. Um, just like to thank you all for joining this morning, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next uh, Forty Friday event.